back. That's Lawrence. No more room in hell. The dead will walk here. Uh, uh, what's up, horror fiends? Your boy Ricky Grimes is back. Bringing you the best in horror entertainment. I'm here with my two panelists. First, Joe the Psychologist. What's up, my man Joe? My brother, my brother, my brother, my brother. What's going on? Uh, so, um, I see a lot of similarities between Lexi and JR and, and their movie choices. Of <laughs> <laughs> uh, course, this was a JR film. Uh, no, no, this is Lexi. So, uh, I'll, there, uh, it's funny because there's a because I just did one with JR for the episode we dropped last week. And I'll mention the similarities. <laughs> awesome. I'm interested to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, of course, the fourth corner herself, Lexi. What's up, Lexi? How are you? I am doing good. It's been a long week, but I'm excited to talk about this film. I did recommend this one because uh, I think I kind of know what the similarity is with <laughs> me and JR. But that's why me and JR have our What's Your Story uh, episodes. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. All right, what we're going to be talking about tonight in this video is going to be the 2022 film Lullaby. This film is streaming on Hulu and is directed by John R. Leonetti. This film stars Una Chaplin as Rachel and Ramon Rodriguez as John. First, Joe, why don't you give us a little bit of a quick synopsis of the film and give us your, your thoughts, your quick thoughts on this one. All right, well, so this, well, when the movie starts out, uh, they're, you're kind of starting out with something already going wrong. You know, you see a man die, a woman scream, and then later on, fast forward, I think it was, I think it was six months later, yeah. I think it was, and then we have a new couple moving into a new house. Lights, again, I don't understand why people just don't turn on the lights at night, but they move into a new house, uh, and it just so happens that she gets a shipment of all these baby things. It was from her sister and there's this book in there with which had hebrew writing and so it's you know the just like this one and attachment had to do with hebrew mysticism so <laughs> lexi and jr is one and one there <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as i saw that i was like these two are really like aren't the real they? question though did attachment have a kid in it no kids. Oh my. Are you serious? Uh, only in a back part of the story. Just something right. that happened that was. No, that's it, okay. What I mean is, I, I'm not against kids in movies, but is it censored around a child? No. 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 All so right. So that, 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 that's, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. No, that one was totally different. But, you know, then the Rachel finds this book. Mind you, I guess they have a colicky kid. You know, they can't put the kids to sleep. So they find this lullaby that she starts singing. And then lo and behold, you know, we come to later on find out, as we'll discuss, it's, you know, a calling for a demon called Lilith. I honestly liked this one because it fell more towards the type of movies that I liked. Uh, a little bit, you know, paranormal um, possession type. But then as the movie goes on, it's not really like that, but it has a touch of it. Um, I liked the storyline of this movie as well. It does start a little bit slow for me, but it does um, get better as time goes on. And um, the story with, um, let me start with Rachel and John. I loved their dynamic in as husband and wife, because typically these type of movies, you have one of them believing alone and they think the other per like the spouse thinks oh you're crazy you're just seeing things you're dramatic and then they find out later that they're right but this dynamic duo here with rachel and john i love that they believed each other from the beginning we a team and so that's what kind of drew me in with this story um so overall i and with all the twists and turns in this I felt it was a good movie, and that's why I wanted to review this one with you guys. Rachel and, and John, I do like the two characters in this film. The kid drove me nuts. He just would not shut up. Oh, my God. That's I mean, but they're a baby, though. I know, but I told myself, oh, my God, this is why I'm kind of <laughs> glad I don't have kids. Because <laughs> this movie reminded me of Z, which is a film that JR and I talk about uh, in What's Your Story 
but the dynamic duo in that uh in the couple of that movie were not on the same page whatsoever and yeah. there was a um a clear disconnection with the child as well but this one like i said they were a team they believed in each other they worked as a team and then they you know get their child yeah out. lilith if i got this correct um was the first person to sleep with Adam? Is that true? Well, she was she was created uh, for Adam, right? Um, and then eventually, and then according to the lore, the uh, uh, lore in the Hebrew, with for them, and then she was banished. I forgot what it was. Why she was banished exactly for? But it's pretty crazy because she went but, out there having all these kind of like mutated demon kids. Well, because she started of having sex. She started with having every, sex with wolves. Yeah, with everything. Yeah, so. And then she didn't realize that she wasn't having pure human babies. And yes. that's when she and started when, stealing when she saw them. Adam and Eve's um, babies, she kept stealing Adam and Eve's babies. So mm -hmm. she's pretty sick, man. And she's got servants. Lexi, let's talk about Liv and her servants. Mm -hmm. What say you? Um, they are very creepy. <laughs> I thought it was, uh, um, but the, the touch where they switch the babies out for the servant, like that's creepy within itself. Um, can you imagine being a parent and then walking in to see your supposed dead child looking like that? And it's not even their child. And that's what Vivian, the sister sees. It's, you know, my child was actually taken and uh, this wasn't my child. So the servants, um, I guess you would, you could say that they served a purpose, but um, I can't even imagine being a parent walking in and seeing that. So that's, to me, that just gives me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. There's a movie called Heebie-jeebies, by the way. Yep, there yep. is. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, there's some crazy motherfuckers here, man. Talk about two-headed babies and all types of yeah. crazy well, shit. Uh, but again, they, they were they were her children. Those yes, were the, I know. With the wolves. That's why you heard them growling like wolves. Um, you know, I... I like the idea. Um, the CGI, yes. You know, <laughs> I, I I think we're just the, you know it, I didn't take them as scary. It was just on the CGI part of the movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was hokey as fuck. Yeah, it was a nice. little bit you know. Um, however, for how they were used, you know, especially how they were trying to get um, uh, the baby. I, I didn't even write down the baby. Eli, name. Eli, right? Eli yeah. to get him to draw blood, by knocking the the base over. Like that's why that's what they were trying to do. That's why <laughs> they they wanted the baby to get cut so that way you know they can Lilith can come. Um, I found that but, funny though when the little two headed guys up there <laughs> dropping the vase and you see Eli's looking like, hey, what's up? Buddy? <laughs> <laughs> but I did like the Lilith story um, because yeah. again, uh, with um, attachment, which was the one that we we did for last week, it involved like you know, lore. And I love stuff with lore. I mean, it, 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 and also the religion lore. So it was something I hadn't heard of. I mean, for the, the Lilith that I knew, besides the you know DC and Marvel versions, um, was the Lilith in the series of, um, I guess it's a DC series also, actually. Um, oh my God, Morningstar, Lucifer. Because they introduced Lilith yeah. in the series Lucifer. So that was kind of what I had known. Now, I knew that she was the first woman. But I I thought that from my own anything, I thought was I guess she was like the first female angel and just kind of had the same banishment and sentence that Lucifer ended up having. What I did like, though, if you look, I love looking at the backgrounds, especially this one scene where John's going through the garbage after he was sleepwalking. He finds the book. It's, a, it's someone's face in the garbage just staring yeah. right at the camera. Yeah. I'm like... And it doesn't point to it. You just got to see it. I, and it's, the movie's filled, littered with with little nods like that. Um, keep an eye out. They're out there. But yeah, man, that stuff was pretty cool. But yeah, it's CGI. Ah, man. that Because you want to be creeped out. Right. But I was more scared of like the, the stuff in the mirrors and in the shadows. But then when they showed the actual entities or whatever you want to call them and eh, then it, it was kind of yeah yeah and i felt like it was the C same cgi stuff in uh z the movie that i mentioned yeah. that me and jr reviewed it what's your story yeah it was definitely the same golem feeling same uh cgi feel yeah, that, that floaty feel that you can yeah. tell they're not even there man well that's what, you when, z, when, you'll see the same thing that they switched movie. the babies it was they, they use golem and uh the golems were um, actually created to protect them. So, 
at least it, it, as um, in the Jewish community. Uh, I can't remember who it was because again, <laughs> so again, the two movies we did, there's a lot of similarities, but um, they talked about the golems in that one. But when they mentioned golems in this one, it was left something that was left behind in place of the baby, and so it wasn't really protection. Right, right. It was also a little bit different on that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a horror movie, and naturally, what that means, especially in this day and age, there's a twist. Joe, my man, I'm gonna throw it to you first because we're the end night guys, especially you. You're the biggest end night <laughs> fan I know. So, wrap this up for us in a neat, neat little bow. Explain to us this twist. So what ended up happening was that uh, Rachel goes to visit her sister. And not to Vivian. cut you off, but also just to add it, and this goes for you too as well, Lexi. Did you see it coming? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but she goes to visit her sister as strange things are happening in the house while John is visiting the same uh, priest or rabbi. Rabbi. That... Vivian had saw when things were going on. So I don't know if the rabbi was in on it too, you know, because it's kind of coincidental. They were both happening at the same time. But anyways, so as it turns out, uh, Vivian had purposely had all the stuff sent over there because Vivian figured out a way for her to get her child back. And she was going to use Eli as the gateway of being able to get her child back. So um, I did see it coming um, because I know like, once she showed up and she's talking to her, she goes, I can help you. You know, it, it just seemed like, I'm like, well, I think if you were in a mental hospital because your husband just got killed and your child got taken away, that's too traumatic for you to want to be dealing with. Unless you've got something else planned here, and which is what it, it turned out to be, and I, I didn't, I, I didn't think it was a good little twist. I mean, I, I can see how it, it's plausible. I'll, I'll go that way for a Bro, horror movie. Uh, that, on, on that's plan. a master plan. If I have seen one, before. yeah, <laughs> to I, I come mean, up with that plan, <laughs> it takes some genius, man. Right. So it was a plausible plan, but um, yeah, no, I, I, I did see the Vivian twist coming. Um, and uh, again, because it was a, such a good plan, like I said, it's plausible, but if you're like an M night and you're looking, I mean, it, it wasn't, it wasn't that well hidden, no. at least not for me. How about you, Lexi? I agree. I saw it coming because it was her behavior, um, from talking to the sister at the psych ward to, then her husband's picking it up. Like, isn't she supposed to be at a psych ward or something? Like, you could feel the vibe from her, the way she's looking at the pictures in the hallway. Um, and then she sings the song. And she knows every lyric to the song because she had planned it. But, like, if you think about it, like, if I was Vivian and my son was taken, I know he was. <laughs> like, I would probably master... The same plan but with my nephew i don't know yeah, yeah. that's that's where it's questionable mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's yeah i get it but not cool <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it was definitely predictable but i liked the twist because it just kept twisting after that yeah I, the twist yeah i like it, it unraveled as it went along too mm -hmm. i didn't see it coming up i just wasn't looking for it i honestly i wasn't expecting a movie like this to have a twist <laughs> like that which was, I guess they got me in that in that sense, you know. You know um, how when like a movie's really really good and then <laughs> it just ends terribly. I felt like it was backwards for this, where it started yeah. kind of terrible and then it just got really really good in the end. Well, crap. Let me talk about my boy John. This motherfucker when he hit a grand slam on poor Pablo. Man, was it Pablo? Pablo was it? Oh, the bird. Uh, I was thinking Pablo. Was, Pablo. <laughs> well, and that was and that was uh, the second thing to happen to bring bring Lilith. He sacrificed the bird. The man. sacrifice yeah. so, without even knowing it, though. Without, without knowing, it. knowing it, yep. Yeah. But I, the twist had another little twist in it because even though Vivian wanted her child, Vivian needed Rachel so they can go in there and rescue both babies. So it's not like she went in there so she can um, just get her own child. She did want to use her nephew, but was counting on Rachel and her 
going into the mirror or whatever this zone is for them to both go get their babies and come back from there with their babies. It ends with a cliffhanger. Do you guys think yeah. it's going to be a continuation? The so better question is, Lexi, would you want to see a continuation? Um, yes and no. I want to see okay. because I want her. I want her to get her child, and, right. and I want to see how that's going to play out. I liked the character of Lilith, and I felt like we needed more from that. I wanted more from from this movie, yeah. uh, in a lot of ways. But I would like to. But I also like the way it ended. Just leave it be and just keep you guessing. Well, let's let's wrap this up then, since you're already on a roll, Lexi. Why don't you give us your closing thoughts? Rate the film. Any notes or anything else you want to bring up? Now's the time. Well, like I said, um, I loved the characters, and I I feel like everyone executed their parts, even Baby Eli and Zachary with the crying. But um, no, I liked it overall. I like I said, it starts off really slow, and then it just the last 20, 30 minutes was all the action. And um, I don't know if I would make the same choices as Vivian as a parent, but I get where she's coming from. She wants her child back. And I don't know how far people would go, but she went as far as she did by throwing her family under the bus. Um, overall, rating-wise, I'm probably going to give this a four, just for storyline basis and the way the actors were and actresses. Um, they all did their part very well for me. Um, I wanted more from Lilith. Uh, she's the star of this movie. She's the one that created the lullaby that was meant to sound beautiful, but it was actually a curse. So I would just wanted more of her story. Although we got a piece of it, I felt like it, it didn't portray like her story enough, I guess, so to speak. The one part that I did get a little annoyed was when Lilith sang. Um, it just went on a little too long for me. And then it started kind of sounding like, what's her name in Hocus Pocus? When um, her character, when she starts calling the kids in. So it didn't go scary anymore. The original Hocus Pocus? For one? Yeah, of course the original. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like the the singing part and, and that and that using that to be able to you know kill him. I'm like, eh. unfortunately, this falls into just like when we did Evil Dead. How I had just watched Terrifier just a couple of days before that. So when you see one movie, then you see another movie that's similar. Guess what you're gonna do? So like for me, I I, I would give this a three point five. For me, I'm gonna give it a three. This film here, it's um. It, a little bit. It's a it's an average film for me. Not and not that it's bad. I enjoyed it. I wasn't bored. I fell asleep a little bit towards the end because I watched movies late and after a bit of you know partaking in other activities. So uh, it's not easy to stay awake when I'm watching them late. But um, it wasn't because I was bored. I liked the characters a lot. And we, uh, Vivian again, you mentioned Lexi brought up a good point that she's a mother and the fact that they threw her in a psych ward, no one believed her. So she took matters into her own hands and. Yes, it involved her nephew, which I do not agree with. But I could understand why somebody would get so fucked up in the head that they may turn, they may like turn towards something like that. Honestly, I don't think this film needed those demon mutant babies. In I my agree. opinion, yeah, I think the film was a lot creepier when he saw when he saw him in the shadows. Yeah, and then yeah, they could have just done like hands. He wanted more of Lilith. Yeah. Yes, like, more more we Lilith saw her yes. here and there, but she didn't like. You know, I don't know. She didn't like come out and like bother them, or she didn't like you know that jump scare with the with um, Rachel and John. Like she just appeared here, appeared there. She was in the trash can dumpster. She was in the mirrors. Like I didn't feel like there was enough. First of all, this movie had a a, a bird that was murdered. Then, <laughs> first of all, then, oh my god, the I thought of you and of I said, "Please warn babies Rick. that are in, uh, this is record, know, how that, many dead babies were in one movie." Yeah, that was a lot of dead babies. Holy shit! So this movie, yeah. I mean, they look honestly, they look kind of they look funny as hell to me. I was laughing when I saw the little baby, the demon <laughs> baby, opened his eyes open. I'm assuming that nobody stayed for the post credit scene. Come on, man! This is two that this is two videos in a row. You're trying to tell me there's a post credit scene in this? Yeah, there's a post credit scene in this one also. Yep. Oh, wait, yes, there is. I did see it. You're right. Yep. Joe, yep. what is it? Take us home. It's just real quick. It's just Lilith sitting there humming her song as she's holding baby Eli. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. So that was that's the, the little okay, post credit. Yeah. 
So that was the post credit scene. Yeah. When I got up, that's what I that's what I looked at. Oh shit! What the, the movie's over. Oh, well, you guys still didn't answer my question about <laughs> do you, did you? Well, I answered it, but did you guys want to see a second or? Oh, uh, well, down, no, or? I, you go first. Okay. So, um, because the way they left it, where they're sitting at the park, on picking whose whose baby they're going to now use to so they can go get their child, it would be interesting. But you'd have to get all the same actors. But not just if, that; it'll be a if you, re, if, if you recast them, you know, and you know, yes, essentially they're doing the same thing, um, you know. But it gave you, it showed you that it there because you saw that a hallway with all the windows that she had to all the other women who are singing the lullaby, who she can get. So that's why I'm yeah. like, oh, so here we go. This is where they're letting us know. You know, we have options here. This film, I think, if you go the same route, okay, let's follow john and rachel once again now they're gonna take someone else's kid and repeat the cycle all over again we we just seen that yeah I, I, now i want it i want it i'd rather have it left and for my own imagination to interpret okay right this is what this is what's gonna happen they're gonna go after it. so i like it open-ended that way now if there is a sequel will i watch it sure do i need it no nah, not necessarily i'm happy the way the story kind of it's tight. It told it, it just has a lot of potential and it wasn't portrayed all the way through. I it has thought. potential. If they do if they do a sequel, improve the CGI, but less of it, less is more, and just keep the same character. They need to, they need the same two central leads. They were yeah. really good together. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, I felt like we saw the babies, the CGI babies more than we saw Lilith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's, that's, that was the issue. So mm -hmm. that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please give us that like, it goes a long way. I'm Ricky Grimes, Joe the Psychologist, Lexi the Fourth Corner of Horror Fiend TV. Cut back next week. Stay good, stay young, stay healthy, but most of all, stay scared.